This is a video a diver took recently of plastic in the ocean near Bali. It shows a problem that many of us are just starting to grapple with, that our addiction to plastic straws and grocery bags are destroying the ocean. But putting the blame for this problem on a country like Indonesia or coastal communities alone isn't fair. That's because the plastic choking the ocean comes from nearly every city in the world. In order to understand how it gets from landlocked communities like mine in Colorado to the ocean thousands of miles away, you have to understand the crazy, unbelievable global trash trade. When I recycle a bottle in Colorado, it doesn't just go to a recycling plant a couple blocks away. No, oftentimes it begins a crazy journey that can end up as far away as Sri Lanka. My plastic bottle's journey begins on a truck that delivers it to a materials recovery facility, or MRF, where the material is sorted. MRF sell things like plastic and mixed paper and bales based on the market price for that material that day. From there, my plastic bottle might hitch a ride on a rail car to Los Angeles or Oakland, where it makes its way by shipping container to Asia. So why do we ship our waste halfway around the world like this? The simple answer is it's cheaper that way. And that seems crazy considering the distance and complexity involved, until you understand the weird economics of shipping. Let's say you want to ship a 20-foot container worth of stuff from Shanghai to Los Angeles. That'll cost you about $1,600. If you want to ship the same exact container from Los Angeles back to Shanghai, it'll cost you $400. And think about that for a second. Shipping the same container of stuff on the same boat, the same distance, costs four times less. The reason for this wild difference in price is a concept that's been in the news a lot lately. It's our trade and balance with Asian countries like China. Every time two ships bring a container full of Nikes from Asia, to the US, only one of those ships returns full of American products bound for Asia. And it's that supply of space that makes shipping stuff from America to Asia so cheap. But there's another important component, and that's the demand for resources. The only way recycling works is if waste, like a plastic bottle, can be melted down to make more plastic bottles or other products. And over the last two decades, no place has wanted resources more than Asian countries like China. This graph shows how much plastic waste China imported over the last 20 years, and it gives a pretty good sense of that demand. It's sort of a beautiful system. A company in Asia ships a bottle full of soda to me in the US, then I drink it, throw it in the recycling bin, and it returns to that country to be melted down into pellets that are used to make more soda bottles. Unfortunately, economics and data is only half of this story, and things get pretty ugly when you look a little deeper. For starters, the conditions in many of the factories that process our recycled waste are pretty grim. Child labor, non-existent safety standards, pollution, you name it. But that doesn't explain how my plastic gets in the ocean. In order to answer that question, you have to understand that not all plastics are created equal. On every piece of recycled plastic, you'll find a number between one and seven. This is a rating system used to determine the quality of that plastic. Plastics with a 1 on them are considered to be high quality. Anything rated higher than a 2 is difficult or impossible to recycle. And the problem is that we often export low quality bales of plastic to Asia. Sometimes factory owners will sort through that plastic they receive and dump the stuff that can't be recycled. And in countries without proper waste management infrastructure, that means dumping it in a nearby river or in the ocean. Hence, it's through this crazy economic system that some of my plastic in Colorado ends up in the ocean. And the truth is, I have very little control over that. I don't determine where my waste goes after it goes into the recycling bin. It's hard to hear this and not feel hopeless. But there's this phrase I kept hearing as I talked to people in the waste management community during my research for this video, and I think it speaks to the agency we all have in solving these problems. Recycling, they say, is the third R for a reason and reducing how much we actually consume will always be far more effective than throwing it in the recycling bin.